Second spot, Rick Kretsch in car number 66 as the field gets the one to go signal. 96 laps in the books, a four lap dash to the finish. So this one is really going to be a shootout. And so far, the top two cars have been able to pull away from the third place car, Rusty Hillman. So it looks like it may be decided between these two automobiles. And the scorers just told us we got five laps to go. We got a five lap shootout. And uh, this is what the fans come to see. They don't want to see caution at the end of a race. They want five laps of racing. And they're about to get it as Tom Kelly begins to pick up the pace in turn number three, bringing the 66 car Rick Kretsch with him and they immediately pull away from Rusty Hillman, the third place car. Running in fourth is Glenn Whitney in car number 77. So Whoa. these two drivers will decide it and they're running close off the second turn. It looked like Kelly got a little bit sideways going down in turn one, but uh, the 66 of uh, Rick Kretsch didn't have the opportunity to try to get by him. He saved the car nicely. And here he comes and boy, did he really pinch it off the fourth turn that time as it looks like the car may be the handling may be going away on that car. So in the closing laps, and you can bet that Rick Kretsch can see that closer than anybody can as he looks to the inside down the back straight away. And didn't quite have the move made, so he's only got four, three more laps to get it done. This one is going to be another classic finish for the sportsman cars, the Hooters Sportsman Cup cars in the Emily 100. And did you notice, Mark, that Kelly took a different line into turn one that time? He's, he's He's learning a lot, you know, just being able to run out front and uh, with a tough competitor behind you. Rick Kretsch breathing right down his tailpipe off the fourth turn and the caution flag coming out on the speedway. And we have a car down in turn two. And I'm not sure if Tom Kelly wanted to see that caution flag or not as when we went back to the last green flag, it looked like he got real loose on cold tires up in turn one. Yes, he did. He did a great job of saving it. As you see the two competitors pulling up beside each other to, I don't know whether to go over strategy or what they're doing. I think he was just making sure that he knew that he was there and wanted him to know who it was. I think he's just told him it's between you and me, buddy. I'm not sure with the, the, the economics on this circuit, of course, with the Hooters Cup late models, the competitors have two-way radio communication with their crew chiefs and all that, but I'm not sure a lot of these guys can afford to buy those expensive radio systems for these cars. They are expensive. They're, they're very handy, you know, but uh, this is a low-buck racing operation. They try to keep the, the funds down for these guys and give them a decent purse to race for. I know that some of them do have radio communication, but I'm sure there's there's some some of the competitors out there that do not have the radios. No, and I think they go back to the old way of communicating with the chalkboard. Right, hand signals. That's it. What is it, one for lose, two for push? <laughs> so we're under caution with just a couple of laps remaining. 97 laps showing on the board, so three to go as the green flag comes back out. Tom Kelly will watch them as they go down into turn one this time. Kelly is having to do some creative driving out there. Well, he did a much better job going down into turn one and two this time than he did the last time. Looked like Crutch got alongside of him on the outside going into one. He showed his hand on the outside and uh, Kelly just pinched it off down tight on the bottom. Coming down to get the two lap to go signal this time by from starter Tony Boswell. And Kretsch is looking to the outside going into turn number one, so he could be having a challenge for the lead. And as you can see, Kretsch did not make it in turn number one. The 72 car, in fact, is gaining some distance now as he's pulled out to about a six car length advantage over Kretsch in the 66 car. White flag coming out, one lap to go, and a car rolling slowly down the front straightaway. I think the officials will probably let him race back to the checker. Right, he's out of the racing groove. But I think what happened was Kelly caused Critch to get out of the throttle just a little bit a minute ago. And these cars are very momentum orientated. You've got to get the momentum up to pass somebody. It doesn't look like he can do it. Kelly built up the momentum from the start and he'll carry it home to the checkered flag as Tom Kelly takes the win with Rick Creech in the second spot. And it Rusty looks like Hillman third will go third. to Rusty Hillman in the 71 car. So Tom Kelly looked like the handling might have been going away a little bit towards the end of the race, but did a nice job of driving, tried to use some different lines around the speedway and scores a wire to wire win in the Emily 100 for the Hooters Sportsman Cup cars.
here at USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida, the big three-quarter mile super speedway for these sportsman cars. Yes, it is, and uh, they enjoy it. Like you said before, we're talking to them in the pits last night and this morning. They were really anxious to get out here and do some door-to-door uh, uh, -door racing. And as we said, they were anxious not only about racing here in front of the, this big crowd assembled here at USA International Speedway. And a lot of the folks that were here earlier tonight for the Hooters Cup late model show, they stayed here to watch the sportsman cars run, and they were treated to a great show. And these guys were looking forward not only to being on TV, but now the top three get their picture taken with the Hooters girls. That's right. And late model digest is down there along with the other trade papers to get these guys' picture for the paper. So it's a, it's a great night for somebody like Tom Kelly. Tom Kelly unbuckling, getting set to come out of the number 72 car. The top three cars have pulled down here on the front straightaway. So we've got Doug Rice standing by in victory lane to talk to our winner as soon as we get him unbuckled. The 66 car, Rick Creech coming home in the second spot. And third is Rusty Hillman in car number 71. And one thing that these sportsman guys are learning when they get out of the car, make sure that you have the right hat on. <laughs> the hat shuffle. And here comes your winner, Tom Kelly, out of car number 72. It says Tim on the screen, but I believe it's Tom Kelly in the 72 car. And our Doug Rice is standing by there in victory lane. So the congratulations going on in the winner's circle. So, Doug, if you're ready, take it away. Tom Kelly, our race winner here tonight, and Tom, every time you'd get a little bit of an advantage and you'd look like you'd be pulling away, that yellow flag would pop back out. Yeah, it was, I thought it was about to kill me there, but we made it. Like, What'd like, you think with that last one come out? when it, Only one lap to go, you're going to be looking at checkered, and all of a sudden, you got to go green-white checkered again. I don't know. Clutch was slipping pretty bad coming off uh, on the starts there. I was surprised I held them off, but I'd like to thank Henry Walker, Sharon Walker, and everybody that helps me. My wife, my dad, it's my first time in a sportsman. These guys gave you a couple of really good shots tonight, but you are able to hang on. Yep, yep, I look forward to racing with them next year. The old saying is to the victor go the spoils, so uh, why don't you take this big trophy here? And Tom Kelly comes away a winner tonight of the Amelie Sportsman 100 here at the USA International Speedway. Thank you very much, Doug Rice, and indeed an impressive performance. Tom Kelly, the first time ever in a sportsman car on a three-quarter mile uh, USA International Speedway in the Hooters Sportsman Cup. First ever win for him in this series and the first ever race. And that's impressive, especially when he said he had a clutch slip and to still be able to hold these guys off, I'm impressed. And one thing that I've got to mention on that, I didn't realize what car he was in. Of course, Henry Walker out of Sarasota, Florida, the owner of this car, Henry and Sharon Walker. And Henry Walker always builds a fine race car and has fast equipment. And I know that uh, they got to be tickled to death. And I know Tom Kelly's got to be excited about driving for someone like uh, Henry Walker. Right, and he's getting the spoils now. Good thing he said something about his wife. For <laughs> sitting out here with all these Hooters girls. These guys are learning fast, Mark. They're learning fast. And, uh, of course, we got into trouble with uh, one of the uh, formula car drivers that uh, we showed him having one of the Hooters girls draw for him because his wife wasn't here and uh, uh -oh. got a little trouble. I think that was Alan May in the Formula Cup series earlier this year. So we got to keep these guys in line. That's it. And there you see also to assemble down on the front straightaway the second-place finisher of Rick Creech and the 71 car of Rusty Hillman, and we appreciate all of you joining us tonight from USA International Speedway in Lakeland, Florida, the three-quarter mile track for the running of the Emily 100, the first ever event for the Hooters Sportsman Cup cars. And on behalf of Doug Rice, who joined us in the pits, everybody with Hooters Racing and Mark Bichardi and our entire crew with Hooters Sports, We'll see you again down the road with more Hooter Sportsman Cup action on your local station and in your Hooters restaurants. On behalf of everybody, this is Roby Helm saying thank you and good night from Lakeland, Florida.